Hello, welcome to Exodus webinar, using a spreadsheet to do an FMEDA. This webinar is part of the spring 2023 FMEDA webinar scheduled. You can see we have a whole lot planned. I hope you're able to tune in for as many of these as possible. This webinar, we're going to be talking about using a spreadsheet to do an FMEDA. I mean, when we invented the FMEDA method back in the late 80s, a spreadsheet was the obvious choice for implementation. And even with the proliferation of superior bespoke FMEDA tools, a spreadsheet can still be used today. So in this webinar, we're going to show you an examples of the kind of spreadsheets in use and in doing so, we're hoping to explain in detail exactly what is an FMEDA and some of the results you might get from the FMEDA. My name is Bill Goble. <clears throat> I'm proud to have worked for Exeter for the last uh, uh, roughly almost 24 years now. I'm proud that Exeter has grown into a global corporation with a strong reputation for technical excellence. Professionals around the world turn to Exeter for guidance, software engineering tools, and certification. One of our groups is the engineering tools group called Exeter Innovation LLC. They have a suite of tools for systems level engineering work called Excellentia. They have a tool for field data collection called Silstat, and a second suite of tools for OEM new product development team work is called OEMX. That's where our FMEDA tool is, at Exeter is uh, part of that suite. Exeter has become the global, the global leader in functional safety certification. Uh, even in 2015, when a study was done by ARC Advisory Group, and we're very proud of these results also. We think of ourselves as a knowledge company. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of field failure study. We figure out new methods of analysis, and we publish our results in our books, our white papers, and our training courses and our webinars. We are talking about failure modes, effects, and diagnostic analysis, FMEDA. While many of you might be used to a qualitative FMEA analysis that goes all the way down to the component level, the fundamental next generation design process replaces that qualitative component analysis with a quantitative FMEDA done at the component level. FMEDA is a bottom-up inductive approach that will generate reliability metrics necessary for functional safety verification. This includes failure rates as a function of failure modes. It includes useful life, the automatic diagnostic coverage, proof test coverage. And we use all of these metrics for functional safety verification, reliability analysis, and even availability analysis. Now, the, a spreadsheet, much like the one that we created when we started this uh, back in the late 80s, has to have a certain amount of information. Project information is necessary, like the name of the project, the date which you're working on it, who's doing the analysis and who's doing the review, and of course the component database uh, version that is used. Then we get right into the meat of it where we identify the component, we identify the quantity of each, the component failure modes, the effect in terms of functional safety failure modes, the failure rate for each failure mode listed, the diagnostic coverage for each specific component 
failure mode. And then, of course, we can use that raw information to calculate the various failure rate categories that we'd like to have for our functional safety verification. So it's pretty simple to understand. And this is pretty much exactly how they looked uh, in the late 80s. Now, the metrics are calculated using the inputs that we have entered, and you can see the equations that are actually used. DC sound stands for diagnostic coverage, and we multiply the diagnostic coverage on a per component failure mode, and then all the detailed per component failure mode failure rates are added up to give us the final device level failure rate. Now, it's easier to explain by just showing you an example. If you could imagine a safety instrumented function that has a toxic gas sensor, a safety PLC, and as the final element, a flasher. <clears throat> this is a device that flashes when the control signal activates to give a warning to personnel in the area that toxic gas has been detected. So you see the, the, the application context. Now we're going to focus on the final element, the flashing enunciator, we'll call it. Now, we, we will need to understand exactly how it works. So we see a flasher context diagram. And the primary functions are, <clears throat> the primary functions are pretty simple. Number one, flash when the control signal says to flash. And don't flash when it doesn't tell you. Hope that makes sense. Perform internal diagnostics and report a failure via a discrete signal. So this is a, uh, this does have some automatic diagnostics built in. We've defined the fail safe state. You can read about it. Yeah, that makes sense. We're pretty precise on the light intensity. Good. Uh, we have a fail safe, fail danger, and fail enunciation failure mode defined. We understand what the power supply will be, what the flasher signal input, and the diagnostic output. Good, I think that's a very good place to start in terms of requirements. I told you we needed an architecture. The architecture for this particular design has like, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven function blocks. Now for each architecture block, we have to understand its purpose. Ah, there's some good block descriptions on the right-hand side of the screen. <clears throat> read through that and make sure you understand. If you're going to do this FMEDA, you're going to have to make sure you understand what each function block does. Now, we, we do have an FMEA, and the FMEDA, the FMEA failure mode and effect analysis does give us the block functional failure modes. I see uh, one, two, three, four, five of them, and the effect. Good. Somebody's done the high-level uh, design analysis pretty pretty well. Let's take a look at the input we need to do a good FMEDA. We do know the safe state and the dangerous state. That's been well defined. We do have a hardware architecture drawing with descriptions and failure modes of each block. We do have a list of the one automatic diagnostic in the uh, diagnostic, uh, the power diagnostic circuit and the diagnostic output circuit. Uh, what are we missing? We're missing any other mitigations. We don't have any. How about the hardware schematic? Oh, you know, we don't have a proof test. Well, let's proceed with the FMEDA without the proof test. We can go back and add that later. Please give me the schematic. 
It's not a bad looking schematic. I especially like the way it's been organized according to the hardware architecture. Now, just a tip. One of our analysts strongly recommends that you put notes on the you put notes on the schematic to remind yourself of how things work. And I know I learned how to do that at one point just because it saves you from a lot of rework, especially if you get interrupted and you're busy multitasking. You know, it takes a while to reestablish contact. It's much faster if you have some good notes. Now, let's start with the power supply block. We've entered the project information. Let's enter the part, the designator for D1, the diode. All right, that's good. Now we need to get the component, the component failure modes and failure mode distributions, and therefore the failure rates for each specific failure mode. Now you would have to get those from your component uh, database. Uh, in our case, we're going to use the, uh, uh, the the component reliability database from the FMEDAX tool. And we're going to enter the failure mode percentages and then calculate the failure rates per mode. Good. Total failure rates, eight fits. The component failure modes are short circuit, open circuit, reverse leakage. Okay. And the failure rates per mode, we've We've got everything we need. Let's enter them into the spreadsheet. Here are the component failure modes. And over here are the failure rates. Now we have to figure out exactly how the component failure mode maps into the block failure modes. Okay. Well, it, it's not very hard. What happens when the diode fails open? What happens when the diode fails short? What happens if leakage currents increases? We enter the deviation. Power supply goes to zero volts. Yeah, I guess that's pretty obvious. The power supply is no longer connected to the circuit. And we enter the impact of that at the final element device level dangerous. That's 2.4 fits, and we'll give that a 100% diagnostic coverage because it's a very simple automatic diagnostic. And you'll see that the spreadsheet does calculate a dangerous detected for those 2.4 fits, and that's exactly what you would expect. So you have to program these equations into your uh, spreadsheet. Let's keep going. What about the diode fail short? Now, this is an interesting situation. Immediately, I'm thinking it's no effect, but is it really no effect? We have lost the reverse polarity protection, which is why we put the diode in in the first place. The safety function continues to work, however, so it's not fail safe, it's not fail danger. Well, I think no effect is absolutely the best choice. And I think we can justify that if we say that the FMEDA is done to predict operational failure rates after installation and commissioning. Once it's wired up, I think there's a very small chance that it will be unwired and rewired. And so we're going to leave it at no effect. And of course, leakage current in this application, there is no reverse bias. So leakage, leakage, reverse bias leakage is absolutely no effect. Good, first component done. Now, to finish, we continue adding every single component, looking up the data, typing them all into the spreadsheets. And when we're all done, the spreadsheet adds up all the columns. Now, I don't expect you to read that, but I did want you to see it's a pretty big spreadsheet. Now let's blow up a little bit of it because we're looking at the results. The dangerous undetected failure rates, 175 fits. Whoa, it's a little high. Dangerous 
diagnostic coverage factor for dangerous failures is 6%. That's not very good, of course, but geez, all we're doing is detecting lack of a power. Hmm, maybe better look at this and see if this is what we really want. Maybe we remove the diagnostic or maybe we do something different with it. But to find out what we might do different, we just scan down the column of DUs, we find out where the problem is coming from, and we identify what we're going to do about it, if anything, to change the design. The concepts are identical, whether we use a spreadsheet or a commercial FMEDA tool. Generally, the FMEDA tools will save you a lot of time, and especially if it automatically fills in a lot of the entries for you, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. Exeter offers the OEMX tool suite with requirements, tracking, FMEA tool, ARCX, and the FMEDA tool called FMEDA X, which is directly fed by the Component Reliability Database, which we'll be talking about. And uh, let's look here, Comp uh, webinar number five. A few more, another week or so, and you got it. Right, we come to conclusions. FMEDA analysis can be done with a spreadsheet as it was when the FMED method was first created. There is a history paper about FMEDA development uh, on the Exeter website, uh, go help yourself, that's free. Device failure modes and the impact of any automatic diagnostic can absolutely be incorporated into the equations, which calculate how each individual line contributes to the device failure mode category column. That's how the FMEDA gets its relative accuracy. An FMEDA will be accurate if you have a good component database uh, to feed in. FMEDAs can certainly be done with a spreadsheet or a commercial tool. Um, I'm using a commercial tool right now, obviously. But the component reliability database is absolutely the most important part of any FMEDA analysis. If you don't have good data in, you won't get good data out. Please remember our FMEDA webinar series and stay tuned for more exciting webinars. Uh, all of these should be available as recordings on the Exeter uh, website. Thank you for your time. I hope you found the information valuable. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to refer to the white papers on our website or send an email. Uh, we can answer you uh, asynchronously. Take care. Good luck in your professional work. Goodbye.